Hey, good morning, everybody. Afternoon, evening, wherever you're at here. Apologies, still getting set up here this morning. Um, yeah. How's everybody doing? I see we have some great friends on here today. Thank you guys for all being here. So, I'm not sure what we're doing today. I think we should totally start with going into the heart space. I know I sure need a reconnector here. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. Sorry. I was just getting set up here still, and I noticed it was 930. So. All right. Let's begin with the sacred space of the heart. Just letting go of all the reality that you've been immersed in. Go into your heart in this now moment. Connecting in with the earth, breathing in that light of the earth into the heart. Connecting to that light of creation, breathing in that light of source soul right into the heart. In that third breath, you just become that column of light that's grounded, connected, and in the heart space. All right. Well, good morning to you guys. East Coast, Philippines, Texas, UK. Hey, Chris. Martel, Leon. Well, cool. So I don't have any questions that came in on email. So if you're here live, if you put your questions over here on the questions tab, and then um, if you're watching the recording, I will read the questions here. And, and of course, if you join live, you get to chat with all these wonderful beings that are here. And they answer questions a lot here on the side. So, and thank you guys for, for that, for the assistance and the clarifications on things. Um, let's see. So we will begin here. Um, Robert, I just bought a quantum healer. How do I access to help with replacing lawn weeds with healthy grass? Well, so any of the tools are gonna to be working in the highest and best as determined by you. I know here we get a lot of dandelions growing and my daughter and I actually did deep fried dandelions the other day that weren't so bad, but um, they always say in the natural world, the, all the native tribes would always say that whatever grows near your abode are the things that you need. So with that said, it's just whatever's in the highest and best good is, is what we do with the tools. So, so Robert, to use the quantum healer with working with anything in the environment, we suggest using the columns of light. So that um, the quantum healer contains the golden fire and light rod, the golden fire and light wand, that brass wand. So if you go to the golden fire and light wand page, or else you can also go to YouTube and just Google Light Anchoring 3.0. Light Anchoring 3.0 would actually be the video on the Golden Fire and Light Wand page as well that I would suggest using. And it walks you through the, the activation of the Sacred Heart, which you need to bring through that Golden Fire aspect of it. And then it gives you the attunement to that Golden Light Rod which is that higher dimensional aspect of that particular wand. And when you go through that simple, easy to follow process of anchoring in that column of light and imagining, visualizing, because when we work from the head, it's just spinning our wheels, but when we are in the heart and we are using our imagination, then we are affecting reality. So part of that process is walking into the heart space, doing the attunements, the activations, and then just imagining that column of light coming through and expanding in your space. Now, anytime that we are doing work with these tools, we don't 
hold a hard intention. A hard intention comes from the mind. We hold that soft intention. And what I mean by the soft intention is, is that if we're doing the work, we already have that intention of what we want to do. We want to clear out the weeds in the lawn and bring in the grass. So you have that intention already when you're doing the work. So you don't have to hold a hard intention. What happens when you hold a hard intention within your mind's eye, like it has to look this way. Um, I know what is in the highest and best, and this is what I want it to be. It collapses the field. And so when we're in the heart and we're just having that soft intention, we, our soul, the universe knows what it is that we wish for. We anchor that column of light. It expands out. And then it is working with the highest and best of all, not only of you from the perspective of the soul, but it is also working with the highest and best of the plant kingdom, the earth, the mineral kingdom, everything that's there. Um, and But yes, I mean, we totally see how the tools are in our soft intentions from being in the heart space we see how this affects our physical world um you know people are using these tools to move pests out of commercial agriculture fields they're using the the intention within the uh, tensor field generator to move pests out of a field but we always create that positive place outside of that field of tensor field generators to create a safe space for them. So it's a push pull. Um, and then that's just like with insects, um, rodents, things like that. So, I mean, we, we can see how the tools can affect our natural physical surroundings. Um, shoot, I didn't bring it with me, but I made a, plate this morning that was um, one that was shown to us by Slim Sperling years ago that will, um, well, energetically, we could feel it creating rain, but it's working with GMOs. Um, and I posted a thing on social media, a picture of it, which perhaps I can just pull this up on social media here to, to show you a picture of this particular um, configuration that slim gave us here years ago and this is it there there are the the three rings the coils the generator and the crystal and actually at the time slim said just to use the a crystal ball but we found that the generator works just as well because it's something to hold the intent um, and it is a tool that is designed to work with the environment, um, working with the, the plants that may have a genetic modification within them. Um, so as well as your, your own, um, is, is your own plants within your, within your whole area. So it covers a larger area and it will work with all the earth. It is, it was originally called the earth grid combo. So again, these tools are working phenomenally with the earth. I mean, even our quantum grid points, it is the earth that is a part of this that is holding this grid in place. And so it's, it's really is working with the earth and in the highest and best there. So let's see. Um, Leon, I added my old Wi-Fi ring to my heavy gauge chalice pendant. Do you see that being different to the bi pendant? Um, no, and I actually have those here. I have the the heavy gauge chalice pendant, the Wi-Fi ring. So the Wi-Fi ring, well, the chalice pendant is obviously for the bi pendant. We have the chalice, which is the smaller one here. These are exactly going to be the, the, exactly the same energetics. Now, as far as the harmonizer ring and the golden fire ring, the harmonizer ring does carry everything that the golden fire has. This is the Wi-Fi ring. Um, but Leon, it's truly, we have brought in those templates of the divine I am, 
which contain just it, this kind of like an everything ring, but only carrying the higher aspects of them all. So if you are using your original chalice ring and a Wi-Fi ring, just hold the intentions that this carries everything that that bi pendant does. Because the binary infusion pendant is actually carrying the energetics of the divine I am. And the divine I am is actually anchored into all of our tools now, no matter when they were made, no matter what the frequency base is. So it is totally accessible. So just have in your conscious intent that you are carrying through everything that that divine I am is, and it is going to come through with this configuration. Uh, Jumbo, are the highest dimensional beings and spirits attracted to the energies being emitted by the tools? So, <clears throat> um, perhaps attracted isn't the, the way that I would say it. Um, basically, within the fields of these tools, anything that is not a vibrational match, anything that is in a lower vibration, stays away. They, they, anything in the lower vibration stays out of these fields because they're uncomfortable. Um, you know, anything of the lower vibration cannot touch the vibrational field that is here. It can't um, lower it in vibration, anything else like that. So anything in that lower vibration will usually stay away from this field or else if they're in this field, it will transform them and step them into a higher vibration by allowing the release of the programs, the beliefs, the emotions, the traumas, the junk, the contracts, cords, all the stuff. Um, contracts, those vows, all the stuff. It is going to, if they're staying within this field and they're in that lower vibration, it's going to release all that stuff so that they become in that higher vibration. But as far as these tools being um, a beacon, let's say, to higher vibrational beings, it is actually you that are the beacon, not necessarily the field of the tools. Um, but yes, you know, they do, the tools do create a field to where anything within that resonance is going to feel comfortable and that they can be. Um, there are certain instances, though, um, truthfully, uh, Jumbo, that we have seen these high vibrational beings that come into these fields because they like the fields. The Activator 3.0 is one of those. Um, the Activator 3.0 does actually seem to attract higher vibrational beings. Um, the Wings of Talk attracts a specific set of higher vibrational beings, and those are the Masters of the Blues, the Master Healers, the Master Clears, the Master whatever they are that we don't even know um, the classifications even exist. So... The master beings um, of the blues are attracted to the wings of talk. And again, it's something that if you don't want to work with these beings, that's okay. The wings of talk is still holding a phenomenal space. And it is actually your soul that will work with them if that is in the highest and best good. Um, so yeah, there. I guess, you know, truthfully, there are a few tools out there that we do see that are attracting um, those higher dimensional beings. Um, let's see, Renard, I've had uh, I've had dragon energy calling. I have four dragon stuffed animals that called for the quantum healers to hang around their necks, and the big one has the wand attached. Have you heard of any of the tools being like used like this? You know, Renard, I saw a picture of. Uh, that you did a little video and showed that um, multicolored dragon stuffed critter, and it felt really good. So you know, it's 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 very interesting that that is a placeholder. Um, you know, the the stuffed animal and that's really super cool. Um, and as far as I've heard of any of the tools being used like this um, for the quantum healers, you know. There are a lot of beings who actually, I had a 
request here about a month ago that we put something into the tool so that they stop disappearing. Um, you know, and especially the Fey realm, uh, you know, in the Fey realm is a huge classification of, of other dimensional beings, but you know, the, the Fey realm is, even though it's a whole, whole large category, um, generalization, we have seen that they will walk off with tools. Um, that tools will disappear. You know, the there are those other dimensional beings that, yeah, they <laughs> they do like the tools. And so not necessarily, um, you know, that they're walking off with yours here, but yes, utilizing those tools as kind of a, with your intention as a space holder, as a, an energy to be used by them. Um, you know, like in Mount Shasta, we have, we, I don't know if you'd say we gifted, but there's um, one of our original tall ascension chambers, the beings that are within Mount Shasta, when they first, when we first set up a um, ascension chamber, I think it was 2015, maybe 2016 out in Shasta 2015, uh, during solstice, before we could even step into that chamber, which was brand new, all those beings came in and we had to sit and wait and hold space for all those beings to go through that ascension chamber. And then they took the energetic part, um, which, you know, the energetic parts quantum. So it's there within the chamber, but they took also a chamber energetically to Mount Shasta, which I was just talking to somebody the other day who was there a part of that. And yeah, we, we, we both agree and see that that is still there in Shasta. So yes, these quantum tools um, can definitely be used by other beings, uh, such as what, what you have there, Renard. And it's just following your intuition with it. Um, again, when you're working with the tools, you don't have to worry about any other yeah, funky critters you know, because again, it's only those within that vibrational match that will be attracted. Uh, DB, what would you suggest to use with a smaller notebook laptop? Nine and a half inch harmonizer ring is too large. Any plans to make a six or seven inch version? So, um, I, I certainly have considered making a smaller version of the harmonizer ring. Um, which I'm not sure where where we are at with that, but you know, to to use the smaller notebook laptop, um, you can use any of the sticky devices like the you know like a golden fire disc or the Wi-Fi ring. Um, you can also use the two inch harmonizer ring. You can tape it on. Um, as far as that goes too, even the four inch water ring, which is a golden fire ring is also an excellent one to use. It's, it's a small enough ring. Um, in, in that four inch water ring out of the golden fire, it is also carrying that energy of the harmonizer. Um, anymore, the golden fire is carrying those energetics of the harmonizer the harmonizer ring, as well as the divine I am, which is even, even more. So as far as really to, to look at a tool that would work best for your smaller laptop, I would just look at the physical size and that four inch water ring would be a great one to use because anymore, these tools are carrying everything. And so that's why it is tough to answer the question if we will be creating a different size harmonizer ring because the golden fire water ring is carrying this energy too. And so it's almost like all the tools are becoming integrated into a whole higher frequency of tools. Um, you know, they're all carrying that divine I am, which is the most phenomenal energetics yet and yet they are still you can still access um, the golden fire so if you get a wi-fi ring you don't have to worry that there's no longer golden fire in there that is still there but all of the other is present as well so it makes it a kind of like a multi-stage tool in that there are all these different 
spheres, let's just say, for for sake of explaining, that there's these different spheres around it, that there's the golden fire, which is right here. It's the most accessible. accessible. You have the intention of bringing through that golden fire. It's right there. But then it also has within it, it always has the chalice energy. All the golden fire I've been putting in that harmonizer energy since the beginning, um, because the harmonizer does carry that energetics of the golden fire. The harmonizer rings do. So that harmonizer energy is in there as well as that divine I am. And so whatever it is with either your conscious intent or your higher soul self is going to be bringing through whatever it is that that you need. And so DB totally. You know, I would go by what physical size is most comfortable and um, is is the easiest for you to utilize there. The Wi-Fi ring is probably the cheapest ring that we have, and they're like 18 bucks, and you can get one of those and just tape on to there as well. So just depends on if you want to spend the extra to get the fancy all-in-one with the sticky back, or if you just want to tape it on. Um, let's see. Leon. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we, we answered your question, Leon. Leon was asking about the, the earth grid combo and then, um, which we answered the question there. Uh, Deborah, can I use the tools to amplify my quantum healing devices? They are small handheld devices I use to heal specific body issues. Yes, um, you know, any of the tensor tools are working so well with any modalities. I mean, if you are using um, sound, frequency, intention, um, you know, any, any tools, crystals, no matter what it is, the, the tensor fields will harmonize. They will create a field to where you know how i've always said it is is that in any modality that you use the rings it is creating a field that one it's a carrier wave so that it allows whatever you're using to go through more and it creates that quantum field so that even like with red leds for a while we made um little tensor field generators that went over top of these red led lights that we found that were a the, just the perfect nanometer length that felt good and an LED will usually not penetrate the skin. When you put that tensor field with it, we had a, in Spain, we had a, a place that was working with bone marrow cancer, and they were using those red LEDs along with those um, generators that fit over the LEDs to where when they use that LED light, it would penetrate into the bone. And so for one, it's creating that carrier wave for whatever energy that you're doing, even if you were just sending Reiki. Um, and then for two, it can amplify with each other. So like a crystal, I don't have a crystal lane here, which is strange. Um, a crystal and the tensor fields will amplify each other. Um, and so there's, and then to, you know, like the consciousness of the crystal can come through more. So the, the healing properties of the crystal. So yes, Deborah, any style of energy tool, sound, light, intentions, crystals, um, radionics, whatever it is, can be amplified and um, they co-create very well together. Uh, Jumbo, did something change in the etheric template of the binary infusion pendant? It's been feeling heavier lately as a pendant. Hmm. No, nothing's changed in that one except for we have brought the divine I am or more into it, which the divine I am is it's a lot more tangible um, of a feeling of energetics. To me, what that feels like is that is getting to there. There's. To me, it feels like there is an aspect within that is, you know, that it is working with. And it's almost like it's done all this clearing for, for you, all these levels and layers. 
And now then it's getting to a certain aspect of you that is right there. Um, I can't say really like a block, but um, we're going to do a meditation here at the end that my sister did for us at the shop yesterday. And that may assist with it because um, Jumbo, it does feel like it is an aspect of you that has come up and it's almost like I can see this and I don't like to use the word darker, but it's it's a denser aspect just because it's carrying stuff. And it's almost like it is right there and I see that pendant sitting right on its chest and it's just it's just there. It's not it's not moving. It's not budging. And um, so, yeah, we're, we'll, we'll do an exercise here. And I feel your awareness on there and I feel that's already clearing it. Um, but we'll do an exercise here at the end. Um, Pam, I often see orbs around my tools in my meditations. In my meditations in Ascension Pyramid, I ask for more clarity on what they are. I notice on the wings of talk flashes of blue. That is pretty phenomenal, fam, Pam. Um, and last week we talked about how people can see the color of sound. Um, somebody sent me an email. Synthesia, I believe is how you pronounce it. Synthesia, where um, you can, where you just see. Um, this person sent me an email, talked about how it can be distracting because it's like the world is so beautiful. You see all these different fields and geometries around things. Um, and so it's just us attuning our awareness to all of these things because there is so much in the energetic that yes we would be totally distracted if we saw everything out there um but yet it is it, it can be a beneficial thing and um usually we're only shown what it is that is beneficial to us on our path so that's really awesome that you're noticing the the flash of blue with the wings of talk because those are the it does contain um, a lot of that blue light energy um, from that other universe beyond duality. So, and you often see the orbs around your tools, and a lot of people will see orbs as either energy or spirits. Um, some people who see their soul could see it as an orb. Um, you know, a lot of people who see orbs, <clears throat> they are they are. Um, conscious beings their their spirit their soul um and so anyway that's really awesome that um that you are asking for that clarity and what they are there because um that clarity doesn't come as a conscious knowing it, it's it's more of a of a heart knowing usually when we get the clarity um because usually the clarity is is more of a of, of a knowing um, but sometimes we will actually get the, the site too, but yeah, just be in your heart, trust, however it is that it comes to you. Um, cause trusting yourself is a huge part of, of everything because after you trust yourself and your sight and your understandings more come through and you get more, um, confirmations with those. Leon, have you considered making silver water rings in the chalice energy? I sure have considered making silver water rings in that chalice energy. Um, and in all actuality, the, 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 silver, the silver water ring we have now has now shifted to carry that chalice energy as, as all the tools. Because um, in this pendant here, that's what we started with was the golden fire silver water ring. But then we, we, we shifted the energetics after we created them. But now as we're twisting the wire, um, I'm bringing through that divine I am into the silver ring. So now then these silver rings are carrying that divine I am, which is also carrying that chalice. So basically any of the, the 0.99 silver rings that we create, even the finger rings, um, you know, would be safe to put into the water. 
And I'm trying to think of the silver finger rings. Actually, you know what? The silver finger rings, we still do use a um, sterling silver solder. So if you do drop a silver finger ring into the water, it could create a little bit of a patina right there around that weld joint. Which should not be enough to leach into the water to cause any kind of issues because what that patina is, is it's copper. And so there's a very small percentage of copper in sterling silver, which is why we usually don't recommend even dropping our sterling silver chalice rings into the water. Um, just because they they will get that patina, they'll leach a small amount of copper into the water, but not enough um, to be harmful over short periods of time. You know, because we always say not to put the copper rings into the water unless you are muscle testing, doing kinesi kinesiology, or the asking of your body every day before you drink that water to ensure that you're not getting too much copper by orally ingesting it where if you have copper on your skin you can never get too much copper in your body through the absorption of the skin it'll turn green and patina on your skin uh, let's see leon slim spurling used to speak about the harmonizers pushing back the geopathic stress do you feel all the tools doing this in some way so <laughs> When I first started working with geopathic stress and all the different grids, the Hartman, the Curie lines, the, you know, all the different lay lines, all the different energy grid lines, the geopathic stress lines, when I was really super into that, um, we created a tool that I thought it would be a wise idea to create a tool that would basically block all geomagnetics it allowed me to create this tool that blocked all geomagnetics and within 20 minutes i was sick and you know i got on the phone with brenda i was like what the heck is going on here i don't feel right um just made this new tool it was blocking all the different grid lines including geopathic stress the heart and grid the curing grid all the different grid lines and we immediately destroyed the tool um, because that was not beneficial. So as far as pushing, so, so I guess blocking. So um, I'll lead up to answer the question here, um, Leon. So the, the geomagnetics, it's not, um, so all the tools that we're creating and the harmonizers create are transforming the energy and the information that comes through geomagnetic lines. So any, any of the tools that we create are going to filter out the non-beneficial aspects of a geomagnetic line. So like, let's say you are, there's a geomagnetic line that comes through and it goes through a nuclear power plant just up the road from you. And it carries all that information and energy on that line that may be non-beneficial. When it comes into the field of like, let's say a tensor field generator or any of our environmental tools, it will clear and harmonize that non-beneficial aspect and, and then as it comes in. But when Leon, when you're asking about Slim speaking about the harmonize, harmonizers pushing back geopathic stress, yes, there was another time that I was teaching a dowsing class and I was doing it the way that Slim taught it where he had copper rods cut to a sacred measurement and you would use your dowsing rods and you would find within the building where these geomagnetic lines would come into the building and and we'd always be looking for non-beneficial geomagnetic lines lines that carried um you know that created either knots in the environment or else that were um carrying information that wasn't beneficial to us energy and information so we would look with our dowsing rods to find non-beneficial geomagnetic lines we would find where they come in the direction of flow and we take one of those copper rods and we would go either outside or just right inside and we place the copper rod perpendicular to that incoming geomagnetic line and we would watch as that geomagnetic line would bounce up and over and down and under we would reroute that geomagnetic line well one of the classes i forgot my copper rods but i brought the dowsing rods and we were at this library in hot Springs, south dakota we found the flow of the geomagnetic lines that were coming into this building and 
we sat in the heart space and we had the intention of those lines going up and over and down and under. And we redoused and we found, yes, we moved those geomagnetic lines through intent, um, through visualization and intentions, but being in the heart space. So basically we created a bubble around that space to where those lines would go up and over, down and under. Um, then when we first started making the starburst, which was the, this uh, design here without the ring in it, the starburst that we were making that Bill Reed first created um, through some knowledge that came from Simon Balaboa, um, which also came from other people who discovered the pyramid. So anything that anybody ever has, it is built upon, I mean, mostly um, that we've seen with the tensor tools. And so the starburst was originally one that was larger of this, the spokes here. These are two different size measurements. And then we had a ring in the center of it. And so this starburst, we were seeing that it was actually moving um, geopathic stress. So geopathic stressors that would come from either underground rivers or, or fissures, uh, cracks in the rocks. We were seeing that the starburst was moving these lines around a home. And with that, we were seeing that it will also move the, the aquifers, the, the underground riverways, that it will move those around the space because those carry also that geopathic stress and so that's all now in the wings of talk you can also do this through anchoring the columns of light in the light anchoring 3.0 you can anchor the columns of light and it will transform the way the geopathic lines come into a building as well as the clearing of them as well as the moving um, and the harmonizing of geopathic stressors. <laughs> Long answer. Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right, um, Anna. I joined. I joined an appendant heavy gauge copper harmonizer ring, the chalice silver ring. Okay, so we have the heavy gauge copper harmonizer ring and the silver chalice ring. Hey, I just happen to have those two. Don't quite know why I did it. The silver quantum healer is nested inside these. Can you clarify what these do together? Any type of meditation for this. So when you added these two exact rings right here, <clears throat> it is the binary infusion pendant. And when you add that quantum healer, that quantum healer brings through a more graceful, and ease to any of the tools that you add it to, especially this here, I feel. So then when you add that little quantum healer inside of here, that makes for a phenomenal um, combination in that it is gonna bring everything through with a lot more grace and ease, it feels like. Um, so as far as working with that, um, and that's it is it's, it's phenomenal to to play with the tools because there are different combinations at different times that you will be more drawn to because they are doing something specific for you um so yes uh, it's phenomenal anna that you use that your your intuition your guidance to to create that that combination and as far as any type of meditation with that um you know, just going into the heart space um, and doing any of the meditations that you're guided to, you know, so much of still what we're doing is the release work, the harmonizing work. And so, um, you know, I, I would say to check the YouTube and do any of the meditations from Brenda over this past year and a half, two years. Um, because her meditations are short, sweet, simple, and feel which one it is that you're drawn to to utilize. And um, because just holding those spaces, holding those spaces, and then when you're using the tools, just having that conscious intent of what it is that you want to do, whether it's the release work. So if things come up into your awareness, um, 
you want to release them. They're there for, for a purpose to be recognized and to be released. Um, Chris, hey, Chris, which tool is the best protection from someone whose directed intentions are not of the highest good? You are the best tool for that. Um, because it is the same as most curses, black magic, um, directed intention. If we are unconscious and unknowing about it, yes, it can affect us. But if we know about it, we have an unconscious, um, either the allowing of it or the not allowing of it. And since we are such powerful beings, we can certainly use the tools, but our unconscious allowing can override the tools. So we see that a lot with people who are, who have like a golden fire generator in their home, but yet that damn cell phone tower is still zapping me and causing me all of these issues in my life. It is because they are overriding what the tool is doing. Um, and so they are pointing their finger at that cell phone tower. And, um, and then that allows that overriding of the tool and for that to take place. So for someone whose directed intentions are not of the highest good, Hopono Ono, do the forgiveness work with them. Do the infinity heart to heart soul to soul forgive them and allow that to shift it and um you know and then if you need to just put your foot down gently to yourself say no i do not accept it but i would actually do the work with it first the hopono ono and and sending that love um is when we do things like putting up mirrors and blocking and all the stuff, it doesn't get us anywhere. It actually can be more harmful. Anna, by any chance, is there any tool you advise assisting anxiety and consequent high blood pressure in the case of a parent losing a teen child? Yes, so for that case of the anxiety, um, you know, cause it depends a lot of anxiety can come from a lot of places. Um, it can come from not being on a path. It can come from your body going through all kinds of shifts and changes and it freaks out causing anxiety. Um, anxiety can, you know, it can, it can keep coming back to not being on a certain path, not following a path that it, um, but it can also come from the emotional stuff. And so, you know, any of the tools that you, you know, especially that you wear like a binary infusion pendant or any of the, any of the tools that you would wear or sit within like the rings, the larger rings, whatever, um, that you can be within their fields or hold in the generator, um, or a Gaia sphere or sitting under a pyramid, any of that can assist and hold the space but then it is something that you need to go within and maybe this meditation that we'll do here in a minute will assist with that um, because there is something there that needs to be released um, recognized accepted loved whatever that is <sighs> forgiven you know hopono ono again phenomenal tool for that um so it is still something that that you need to do to make that click for that to be released and that can be simple and so again we'll do something here at the end that might might assist um christine i did the same thing with my silver quantum healer too anna would combining the regeneration energy from the healer with the harmonizer and chalice create a different type of harmonic creation field trio. So the healer with the harmonizer and chalice. So 
you know that's that's been an interesting concept with this harmonic field harmonic creation field trio um you know that we've been using here for the past couple of years because this has very much been a precursor to the field that this carries um has been a precursor to all of these newer fields and um we're still playing with this whole concept too um this this new um tool that i was showing you here this is the the older frequency one but the newer one that i just made last night um that i meant to bring to show you guys we're using that harmonic creation field trio in there as well as the harmonizer as well as the divine i am and the chalice and um truthfully christine i really am not sure yet on a lot of these fields and how they are intermingling how they support each other um or what truly the the true difference is with these fields um i still feel like we we i still feel like that harmonic creation field trio is um a a field that we should still be utilizing um but as far as creating a different type of harmonic creation field that's a really great question and actually as soon as the webinar is done i'm going to go twist wire for a new trio set which is going to be um big rings lighter gauge hopefully a lot more affordable we'll see once we do the time study and these are going to have the harmonizer ring the chalice ring and the divine i am and we're just going to create this set of three rings um, and see what they do so we'll find out here uh, maybe next week we'll have a better answer to that question christine and we might also have a a new a new trio of rings anna just a note is to help a friend i can't figure out from where it comes from oh, let's see. and that's the anxiety and high blood pressure okay so if 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 you are trying to help a friend who had that that loss of a teen and um and they are having the high anxiety and blood pressure um when we do this exercise do it for yourself first this first time around then go back and watch the recording and when you do the exercise hold the space for them to be there when you do any of this energy work um or even wearing a ring or you your you have your chalice pendant or your binary infusion pendant or whatever it is or your pyramid um or the energy work basically we're creating a sacred space within that sacred space you can invite somebody into that sacred space whether it's visualizing them within the the set of tools or the pyramid or the space that you created through this meditation um, you can invite that person in soul to soul you invite their soul to step into that sacred space and you just hold that space for whatever is in their highest and best good which is between them and their soul but you are inviting them in and so when you invite them in they can have that energetic um you know that healing work the clearing work the release work whatever it is that they need can occur within that space so so anna yeah when we do this work here today do it for yourself first then come back and that's with everybody here um do it today here live for yourself and then come back and rewatch it and then hold the space for anybody you wish to step into there uh leon is that new chalice charging plate with resin going to be released in the future <laughs> so the new chalice charging plate oh is that the one with the three rings um actually that was meant to be so when we made this most recent charging plate with the the three rings in the in the echo epoxy the plant-based resin um it was meant to be a creation for uh charging pendulums and and we were going to create a um well 
it, 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 that's a process right there. But um, we actually are using that for this new piece that we're playing with, that one. And so this is actually all housed in epoxy right now, though I'm not really happy with how it turned out yet. Um, but we, we've had enough interest with this post, which is on Facebook and Instagram. We've had enough interest with this post that um, w I would like to recreate this tool. And so we're using those that epoxy base to hold these three rings, the four coils, and that generator. Um, and a fun thing about that particular tool is, is that after that tool, when we first created that tool, we were taking that quant, the, the, the third template of it, that higher energetic aspect, and we were putting it into a way that we could throw these out the window as we drive through Iowa, through all the GMO cornfields and the GMO everything's to where you don't see bugs on your windshield because all the insects are just like, I don't know, gone. And so it's really interesting to go out there and we were throwing out these little energetic pucks of these tools and they would anchor in and they would stay there creating kind of like a grid because it was called the earth grid combo. And it was our intention that we were shifting all the corn into a non GMO corn because that GMO corn, um, you know, we have organic farmer friends out there and yeah, well, we won't go down any rabbit holes with all GMO stuff, but um, anyway. So yeah, I'm not sure what we're doing with that resin plate as of yet, Leon. Uh, do these tools have to be removed to pass through a metal detector in an airport? Um, yes, most definitely. Um, everything that when you go through the airport, you can throw it in, but you know, I have carried my big wand, my big golden fire and light wand, my short golden fire and light wand that I usually carry everywhere. Um, I've never had problems in an airport. The only time that I had problems once was in coming back from to call in Guatemala that they would not let me carry my dowsing rods because I was down there for a conference um, near winter solstice. Uh, a couple years ago and I had like eight pairs of dowsing rods with me and I had to throw them all in the trash because they would not let the dowsing rods go through because they said that they could be used as a weapon. But otherwise, I have never had any issues. I've carried a floor plate onto the plane. I tell them it's a piece of art, which it is. And I've been able to carry my floor plate onto the plane. I've actually stuck it right beside my seat. I've carried a smaller floor plate with me. That one I put underneath the seat in front of me so that the guy in front of me got all, you know, everything <laughs> during that plane ride. Um, I've carried the big rings. So I've carried practitioner sets onto the planes um, with no issues. I just tell them that it's my, you know, for my electromagnetic sensitivity and everything else. So they didn't even question it. Um, and then, yeah, so I have not had but the one issue with the, with the whole package of dowsing rods. Um, of carrying onto planes. So you are good. Um, let's see. <laughs> Chris, you're getting the Twisted Sage Studios package here today, huh? That's awesome. Um, I was just going over here on the chat, you guys, uh, and, and checking it out. Hey, Malit, you're Checking in from the gym again today. Fantastic. All right. And thank you guys for all being friends and chat here on, on the chat side. It's it's really cool to, to see everybody that's here. Um, all right. So it looks like we are done with questions then. Oh, one more popped up. But um, Deborah. Do these tools repel the vax cast off? Um, so these tools will protect your field with anything coming in. Um, you know, it's again with with the whole vaccine stuff. Um, there's there's a lot of fear around a lot of things. Um, 
and this whole idea of you know of somebody who's vaccinated and they're sloughing off the stuff and causing issues it's to me it's not biological to me it's energetic that there is energetic stuff in the field and that if you're energetic sensitive and you're in fear that you receive that stuff and it travels energetically and not necessarily physically chem chemically um and so even if it does travel physically chemically um you can transmute that as it comes into your field and especially you can transmute it if it is energetic and so as far as the tools go for for any of that style of work the tools will help you be in your power and for you to be untouchable of anybody's energetic stuff um and it's also kind of along the lines of these damn cell phone tower that's affecting me even though i got all my tools is, is that you know you're pointing you're in fear you have that that everything even if it's an, not conscious of it all if you let go of that and um to the hopono ono with with everything hopono ono doesn't have to be with or doing the infinite art it doesn't have to be with a person it can be with a situation um it can be with a person's choice um it can be with the manufacturer of the vaccine it could be with the vaccine itself it could be with the coronavirus itself whatever it is that we can do to shut off the switch of us going like that as soon as we shut that down we can stand within our own selves stand within our own light our own power and we transmute whatever comes into our field whether it's energetic chemical physical um yeah that's that's what we that's what we can do awesome <laughs> thanks deborah um all right so you guys let's do <laughs> sorry keep going over here to chat and uh it's just people are talking about losing their tools and that they're ready for them to come back yeah that's um that has been a thing that tools do seem to disappear but um anyway hey bam kimball all right so let's do what my sister walked us through yesterday so we've been through all the stuff that has been holding space for and the work that we've been doing recently has been the bringing in of our entire creation every incarnation of our soul throughout this universe um we've been integrating that we've been bringing it in we are now carrying our light as we exist throughout the universe we're carrying all we're bringing in all of our soul aspects as everything is coming into alignment here um we did this same exercise yesterday and then you know that of bringing everything in into this now here present moment but Brenda had us go through yesterday and bring in our entire lineage, um, all of our ancestors in each of these incarnations, every incarnation. And that was huge because it is touching all the beings, um, our ancestors of every incarnation. So anyway, let's see about this. <clears throat> All right, we got to get into a space here. So we'll go into the sacred space of the heart. All right. So again, just closing your eyes, putting your attention onto your physical heart, connecting your heart with the heart of Gaia, breathing in that loving energy light right into the heart. Connecting with the heart of creation 
breathing in that light of creation into the heart. As you breathe both those in, you become all that you are in this present moment as you come into the sacred space of the heart. Bringing in everything that you have ever been as a soul, so you are bringing your soul in fully into this present moment, here and now. As you bring everything that you are into this here and now, and as we are all gathered together here within this sacred space, the space that carries the chalice, that carries the divine I am, that carries all that you are, because all that you are is much more than these energies. Then we ask all of your ancestors, all of your lineage, from every point of light that you are, to step in as well. Again, this here now moment. And then just be, just allow. Things will be released, things will be harmonized. And it only takes that moment and then it's done. It is complete because we are in that space of no time, out of time. And being out of time is just simply being in that space where time does not exist. It is the present is when we are aligned with everything that we are. Okay, so keep doing this. Do this as often as you can because it is going to keep releasing and clearing. It is going to keep stepping you more fully in and it's going to help you master being in the present, being in this infinite now moment. All right, you guys, much love to you all, and we'll see you next time.